Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Let's do a little uh, late night with Max and Jax, but I'm not going to ramble tonight. I'm just going to talk about the profit boxes and where we're at for tomorrow's option trades. And I don't even think I have any comments to answer. So let's just concentrate on, and I've already got the profit boxes drawn, but let's just concentrate on these option strategies for tomorrow. And then I'll take questions afterwards in case, uh, in case anyone has any. Okay, well, let's look at today's price action first. Okay, this was a one heck of a good recovery today. I mean, <laughs> that was a great rally at the end of the day. I, you know, halfway through the day, I thought we were going to be three for three losers, but it turns out it was just a stop run or a, um, you know, liquidity break, they call this. Uh, I, you could call it a bear trap. But, uh, it, you know, it was definitely a great buying opportunity if anyone bought down there. When I, I, the first bar this morning, I thought it was breaking out. We were above the previous day's high and looking good. So I uh, bought some futures up here and got cleaned out. I lost like 70 bucks. I, I don't trade very much, uh, small amounts in futures. But anyway, it was not a great trade. The other day I made about 70 bucks. So I gave back what I made the other day. Two days ago, I had a really nice trade when it was breaking out. Two days ago, I caught, I caught, uh, I caught, I caught one, I caught it in here, and I wrote it up to here. Anyway, all right. Um, yeah, but anyway, they just looked to me like they were trying to get the stops underneath the prior dates low in the NDX. Let's check out the old Mr. Russell 2000 here. There was the weakest one today. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty weak, but there was a heck of a rally for them to get back to even. On their closing trade today, I show, I show that they closed it for $23, and I got that off the, uh, here, I'll show it to you guys just to prove I'm not crazy. Okay, right there. These were two-day options. They didn't expire till tomorrow, but they closed them today. They opened them yesterday, closed them today. For twenty-three dollars and seventy-seven cents. That now that was a great fill, but I don't know how they got the that price, because to me, they were nineteen eighty options. All right, and they were twenty-five points in the money. So you, one would figure they would have to close them for twenty-five points. Plus, they don't expire till tomorrow, so they have a little bit of time premium on them. So I'd say more like thirty points. Somehow they closed them for twenty three seventy seven. I just don't get it. I wonder if anyone else noticed that. There's uh, somebody that also does uh, spreadsheets in one of the discords I'm in, and I hit him up to ask him if he noticed that, and he's looking at it right now. So um, we'll see what he says, and we'll get a reaction live on air. But I think it should have been, you know, 30 points or something. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't get it. It's a good feel. I thought maybe they closed it early, you know, maybe like if it, and I could see that if it was a little bit higher earlier, if it was like, you know, if this bar was up here and then they could have closed it earlier, but I just don't see how they got that price. I'm almost thinking they weren't really two day options, but I checked that and they were, they don't expire till tomorrow. So I have no earthly idea, but maybe these traders do know what they're doing. Maybe when they do a two day option, they figured out they can close it cheaper or just as cheap as basically a one day option for some reason. I, I don't know how that works, but I might start trading two day options. I mean, two day RUT options. Anyway, uh, I don't know. It's uh, to me, that's kind of interesting. Okay. Well, let's look over here at the SPX. All right. Same thing with SPX. I drew the boxes kind of jacked up. I need to, anyway, I'll fix that later. But uh, SPX had a you know a heck of a rally to come to come back. It was, I mean that's a that's a vicious sell off. But same thing. It was trying. I bet it was trying to take the stops underneath that swing low. You know, and underneath that that low right there, yesterday's low, and they got them. They got the stops and ran the other way. These uh, <laughs> these professional traders, hedge funds, market makers, they all know where the stops are. They know where retail puts their stops. And they aim for them on purpose. Let's see what old, uh, what my buddy over here on Discord says. 
Yeah, it looks like they added a few more contracts as well, but are getting less premium since they're trying. Anyway, yeah, he's curious about it too. He says, strange, as is the same as one of the opening prices only. Looks like they added a few more contracts as well, but are getting less premium since there is less at risk after the two trades. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to tell him thanks for checking it out. Okay, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for sticking around while I was typing. I'm not trying to keep you guys around all night. I, I literally worked on another video since the time I woke up, and it's a 40-minute long video. But to do a 40-minute long video takes like a lot longer because of how many times I mess up and have to start over again, and then you have to go edit it, and then the uploading takes a long time. The, the darn thing's still uploading. I wanted to release it today, but it's 35 minutes left. It won't be... I put it for an 8 a.m. premiere tomorrow. I talk about using margin. I talk about the two-thirds, the reinvesting the two-thirds back into these funds to prevent any type of decay or erosion. And I also talk about volatility compression and why the dividends have been going down. And then I talk about, oh, some life lessons I learned. I kind of use story time. I kind of do some story time. If you guys don't like story time, you probably won't like this video because there's, there's about, no. Oh, 20 minute story time and actually, you know, or 25 minute story time and maybe 15 minutes actual, you know, type information. But the story time all has a point and uh, I really liked it. I had a good time making it. I think, I think some of you guys might like it. It just, just depends. Anyway, it's going to premiere at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm going to uh, be up and I will answer questions, you know, live when it premieres. So I can talk to you guys in the morning. Of course, I'm going to be on this answering questions too. So I guess let's just look at these darn profit boxes and uh, or the spreadsheets, I guess. We've already looked at the charts. Let's look at the spreadsheets, and then I'll let you guys get out of here. All right. So QQQY, these guys trade the NDX, all right? So they sold 164 contracts at the 16850 level. Like I always say, that makes 16850 our max profit. You don't even need a calculator. Short strike is always your max profit. All right, and then to figure the minimum profit, you subtract however much premium you sold the 16,854. So 16,850 less 64,22 comes to 16,785.78. All right, so that's kind of our buffer. That's, you know, they didn't get as much premium as yesterday because the premium goes down as the price goes up and the price has been going up. Look at, look at these guys. They've had one, two, three, four, five, six winning days in a row. Yeah, they got off to a rough start, but they're they're killing it lately. I mean, just absolutely killing it. Well, I guess tomorrow hasn't won yet, but anyway, they have one, two, three, four, five winning days in the book, in the books, in a row, and then four losing days before that, but then two winners before that. You know, let's look at their uh, cumulative. Let's see here. I forgot to drag this down. Well, if they... If they win tomorrow, if they have a winning trade, they'll be just about back to even. So that would be that would be good. But even as it stands now, they're they're underwater ten or twelve cents, depending on how I calculate it. Um, all right. So I mean, they're going for one point or one million tomorrow. They went for one point three today and caught every bit of it. You know what? Yeah, I was gonna. I wonder if I should check that. Let's look at the spreadsheet. I want to make sure they didn't have to pay anything to close. I... Yeah, they're right on the top line. So it said on the spreadsheet, it said expired, and expired means zero. So yeah, they that, that was a good trade. All right. Well, uh, let's look next at JEPY. These guys trade S&P options. They sold 222 S&P options at the 4790 level. Same price as yesterday. Jackson. No, sir, buddy. No, sir. Sometimes he's naughty when I'm doing these shows because I'm not paying attention to him, and he'll pick up something and chew on it. Jackson, it's okay. You just no chewing, okay, buddy? No chewing. Remember, we talked about this last night. No chewing, okay? Sorry about that. Luckily, I noticed it. Last night, I didn't notice it, and by the time the show was over, he had my pillow 
he took my favorite memory foam pillow off the bed and started ripping the stuffing out of it like it was a like it was a toy and he started again tonight but I caught it in time and I'm cramming the stuffing back in there I guess I need to get on Amazon and order a new memory foam pillow all right Jackson just behave buddy some reason it makes him nervous when I do this late night show um, or he just he gets anxious I think he wants me just to pay attention to him and when I'm talking to the computer he just doesn't understand it all right um, so I just need to pay more attention to him he's a he's a great dog he's just a little on the high maintenance side but he is an absolute sweetheart so these guys sold 222 options at the 4790 level for sixteen dollars and six cents so 4790 is the max profit you know they sold the same option yesterday and they got 24 this is called volatility compression I spend a long time on my video today talking about volatility compression and why the dividends going down and everything but this is like a, a real life example of it also they could have been a little closer to the money or uh, there's other there's other factors but you can't just totally look at the numbers but you also have to look at the closing price on each day and this day it was 83 and this day it was 80 so that day I don't know anyway uh you know this this was just a good trade because yesterday they got 17 points of extrinsic value and, and today they only got six points that's the money they're going to make for sure. No matter what else happens, extrinsic always goes to zero at the when the option expires. So, you know, even though they had to cover this option today for $9, they sold it for 24 and they covered it for 9 But they still earned that 17 Even if they would have had to cover it for 100 they still, still would have earned the 17 points. Once you sell the extrinsic, it's yours to keep. And I know that's a hard concept to understand, that you can have a losing trade and still make money, but uh, you can. And that's why Jay mentions that he's going to pay the extrinsic. And I think I finally figured out what that means. He means at the very least he's going to pay the extrinsic, I believe. He means in a month where we lose every day, he's going to just take the extrinsic earned and, and pay that out. Lately, he's just been paying, and I showed this on my spreadsheet last night. He's just, it looks like he's just paying the earnings, but they've been having good months in November and December. It looks like he just, you know, takes the earnings and divided by the number of shares, and that's what he's, that's what he's paid. It, you know, my spreadsheet uh, last month that I had the EPS at, I don't know, 57 cents and, or 53 cents, and he paid 57 cents, and something like that. Anyway, it was just right in line. And it's not, I'm just not going off my opinion. That's what Retire on Dividends said. And he's been doing this for a couple months longer than me. And he's a lot more accurate with his spreadsheets. And he has the mind of an accountant. He's not an accountant, but he he does work in finance, I think, or in insurance. He, he has a lot of experience with, with facts and figures and numbers. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's what it is. But, but the 1790 is yours to keep no matter what. So you always want to look at extrinsic, and that's how much they're going to make, even if the trade loses. Um, so today it's only 630. So, and it's because the option got a lot less. Um, you know, they received a lot less for it. But that's also the difference. Yesterday, well, no, that's not the difference. Well, yeah, that is that is part of the difference. Yesterday, the price was three dollars higher when they sold the option, so that that made that option worth a little bit more because it was closer. It was further in the money yesterday. The option they sold, or wait, let me think about that. I had that backwards. It was actually, I don't know. I'm gonna have to think about that anyway. Let's just uh, like I say, I've been working too long today. Let's just finish this up. All right, $356,000 is what they're going for, 34 basis points. They got 23 basis points today. They're trying to average 25. You know, they got 32 the day before that, and they really didn't get anything the day before that, but then 34, then 35. These guys have been having a pretty good month, all things considered. I mean, it was not fun losing $1.1 million two days in a row, or, well, one point having two loser losing days in a row and losing one point one million dollars between the two days, but if you look at their, you know their total earnings divided by shares right now it's fifteen cents and I have that number up here this is the cheerleading number. Fifteen cents you know that's uh, 
you know, last time the dividend was, uh, what, 53 cents or 57 cents, something like that. So, you know, we'll see, but these guys are doing better than the other two funds right now. The, these trades are going better than the other two funds. You can look here and see that JEPI itself uh, was was the same as the index. JEPI was down, you know, six basis points. The index was down seven. That's just, that's basically the same. Let's go back and look at uh, QQQY and see how it compared to the index. It underperformed the index today. QQQY was down 46, or no, I'm sorry, it was up. It overperformed the index. It was up 46 basis points. Index was only up 17. That's a huge difference. That's a that's a big freaking day for these guys. Oh my gosh. Good job, QQQI. That happens a lot on days that it's that it, you know, it happens a lot. It happens on it, these things usually outperform the index except on days when it's up a lot, like, you know, a percent or a percent and a half. Then it's going to lose to the index. And that does happen quite often, but on days when it's flat or down a little bit, yeah, you know, or down a lot. These daily options just just do a really good job of, of uh, buffering buffering the volatility out of your daily returns. Okay, so let's look at IWMY. We already looked at this one. This is the one that closed for twenty three dollars that I was asking my friend on Discord about. Let's go back and see if he said anything else. Huh? All right. Yeah, he's made some more comments. I'll look at it later. Interesting. We're going to talk again in the morning, and I'll follow up with you guys, and uh, we'll figure this out. I'm just trying to stay on top of it better. I was a little bit embarrassed the first couple of weeks I started doing this. It seemed like every day or every other day I would get a comment, hey, uh, you forgot to do this, or you, you put the wrong date here, and they were all legitimate comments. I, I did. I was going too fast. I'm trying to slow down and make these more accurate, and I'm especially doing that now the retire on dividends isn't doing daily updates. I'm really trying to bring the quality of these updates, uh, you know, up to up to standards. Anyway, so these guys are going for 562 tomorrow or 58 basis points. That's gigantic. I mean, these guys have had, these guys are in the worst trouble right now. They're, they're down 65 cents. I mean, no doubt. I'm not trying to put lipstick on a pig, um, you know, but I don't know what to say about this one. This this is uh this is not good. This, this they're off to a bad start. So, you know, if you have all three, and I know that's not always realistic, and I know when you know I I always talk about being diversified. I don't have all three. So I, anyway, but I'm saying if someone does in theory have all three of these, they're uh, you know they're they're covered because the other two are doing fine. But then last month, maybe when the other ones weren't doing as well, this one did really well last month, and this one paid a 57% yield. And, you know, meanwhile, you if you have Jeppy also, you're mad because Jeppy only paid 32 points. That's what I talk about a lot in the video about the dividend going down. You know, that's upsetting to, you know, I can see that's upsetting, but at the same time, if you have all three of them, you know, IWMY was holding up the slack last month. This month, uh, you know, we're holding up the, you know, doing doing well. This month, JEPY is the one uh, doing well. So, so anyway, all right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to sit here and play with Jax a little bit, and then I'll be on at 8 in the morning for the premiere. Be sure to watch the premiere if you like story time and if you want to hear about volatility compression and you want to hear about reinvesting two-thirds of the dividend and you want to hear some other stuff. Yeah, heck yeah. Tune in at 8. And also, if I get any more information on the option price on that IWMY, I'll come on the morning update, the morning defiance update, and we'll talk about it at that time. Have a wonderful evening, you guys, and thank you for tuning in.